Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with the Real Housewives of Potomac season six reunion part one. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then child, welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you get anything out of the content. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. All right, so I didn't do a separate video for the looks of it all. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through the looks right now. Uh, Karen, okay. Uh, she looks nice. Uh, I mean, the hair seems to be the same type of hair she always does for the reunion. Ashley looked pretty. I like the fact that her hair was flowing. I like the naturalness of the leave out. And then, you know, she had a few extensions all the way up and through. Um, and I mean, she looks nice. Uh, as far as Mia, Mia looked nice as well. Finally got her some foundation matching the neck of it all. So she looked nice. Wendy looked pretty as well. Uh, Giselle looked like praise is what I do is what I do. She looked like a straight up praise dancer. <laughs> I said Giselle. Oh my God. Oh, Giselle's so pretty, honey. She's so pretty, but she's so tacky, honey. And don't care about the tackation of it all. Do y'all hear me? So Giselle, you know what, honey? If you're going to be tacky, then go on here and be tacky, child. And let me just say this. The people who style you and style your hair, they don't like you. Okay? This right here is a prime example of those that smile in your face, but they really ain't for you. Okay? They ain't your people. Now, I don't know what we got to do, but I want to say this. Cal is not your friend. I don't care how many years that you've known him. You are too pretty to have such horrible hair, okay? That wig is wrong. It's really wiggy, okay? I hate a wiggy wig. And he's gotten it wrong every single reunion. I decided that today I was going to go back down memory lane. And I watched every single reunion from season one up until tonight. Because I ain't had nothing else to do, child. I had reviews to do, child. But I was just trying to take a little break. Just something for me, okay? Okay. But I looked at Giselle's looks and they've been looking the exact same for seasons. And child, we gonna get into that. As far as Candace is concerned, Candace, <laughs> Candace, girl, that bob is bobbing, okay? And it's bumped. Baby, turn around and let me see Candace Bob go bump, bump, bump. Baby, that bump is completely bumped. Do you hear me? <laughs> Baby, I hate that wig. I hate that wig. It is pushed down. Your baby hairs are touching your eyebrows and your bob is giving 1700 density. Now let's get into it if we gonna get into it. So the ladies start coming out and whatnot and Mia comes out and Andy's like, yeah, it's 11 o'clock. Mia said, you know what? I had to just get used to this all season. I've been going through this. So I just started bringing my laptop because you know, time is money. Mia hush. Okay, they got that little lying problem. You came after everybody on every scene of everything that you were invited to. Girl gone. So the ladies get on set. Here comes Ashley. And Andy was like, oh my God, you look good. You look beautiful. You look like a Barbie. She's like, ah, I'm Darby's Barbie. He calls me that. Girl. <laughs> Girl. Oh, child. The reason why that is hilarious to me is because she thinks it sounds so cool. Honey, that's a fool do y'all hear me andy said oh wow honey the scream that i scrumped when he said oh wow child it's a mess so andy speaks to the girls and he gets the niceties out of the way he said welcome ladies welcome to the goddess party and i was just thinking oh i was hoping y'all would recreate giselle's backyard barbecue so they could have worn some hard hats and whatnot <laughs> some dust mats some hazmat suits child it would have been a mess oh child i said not the goddess party but anywho, oh, I forgot about Robin. Robin was there. Okay, moving forward. So Andy starts right in with Giselle's fashions and some person on Twitter, I think I was born in the 80s or the 80s or the babies or whatever their name was. Sorry, I, don't, I forgot your name. They said that she gets a lot of shade for her fashions. And last season, she thought that her looks had improved. So do the ladies agree? And does she have a real stylist? So Giselle said, I have the same person. Andy said, and has that been successful? Has that been a successful journey for you? <laughs> Man, Andy's so shady. It's been a fool. What do you think, Andy? Now, what do you think? If people are tweeting you about her fashions, do you think that it's been a successful journey for her? 
So she's like, yeah, you know, I have the same people. Honey, was Giselle going to be loyal if she don't do nothing else? Moving forward. So Candy said, you know, I can't agree with everything that she wears. Giselle said, I can't agree with everything you wear. Candy said, what well, don't you like that I wear? Baby, I hollered. <laughs> Candace was like, girl, I know you didn't. Giselle said, I can't remember, but they're fine for you. Okay, I know at least one Candace. Okay, I got to say it. Her little ensemble at the drive back video, it gave me Meet Me at the Malt Shop. It was very childlike, okay, for such an adult song. The stylist got it wrong on that one. But for the most part, you pull yourself together. Candace said, yes, but what's fine for me is fine for most people. <laughs> She's trying to say normal people that know how to dress. So Giselle said, look, I'm happy with everything that I put on my body. Well, child, that's that on that. Moving forward. Karen said, look, we can't expect improvement. It's going to be consistent. Mm, I was like, oh, child, not flatlined. Shout out to Portia. Child, let Giselle be tacky in peace. Y'all leave her alone. And Karen, you just got them wigs together. Now, I love you, Grand Dame. But when Candace was first introduced on the scene and she took y'all to that little picnic where, um, Chris was catering that wig was sliding off your head like as if it was running away from the conversation okay <laughs> baby the wigs were running okay so all of y'all have had a little bit of something going on with you but just let her be taking in peace honey she wears what she wears and she ain't changing it moving forward then Andy shows us this pixelated flip phone video of Nicki Minaj saying she wanted to be there but we all know she gonna be there child and I was like what is this flip phone footage and I had to wonder if it was my tv and i was like let me go look on the other tv child looked on the other tv it was still the same i said oh okay honey so they just playing the fool okay got it then we go over and we start with mia and andy asked how she liked joining the group she said it was a wild ride andy asked what were the ladies first impressions candy said i liked her at first okay and then he asked giselle about her first impression she said you know i loved her at first but we had a few bumps in the road but i like how she owned everything and she was so real candy said i i mm -mm. Don't forget that little line problem. <laughs> well, y'all know she didn't say line problem, but y'all know I like to judge it up. So she said, no, but she says she tells lies. So Mia said, well, what did I lie about? So Candace referred back to the clitoris of it all. Okay. Cause you did lie about that Mia. So Mia tries to explain it away like she likes to do. So then Andy goes, did you get a clitoplasty or did you get vaginal rejuvenation? Not a clitoplasty. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. Child, I'm childish. She's like, you know, I actually had a lot of work done. You know, I had a lot of, you know, I had a full mommy girl. You got them beef curtains together and that's okay. But quit evading the question. Okay. You're talking in circles. So she's like, you know, G and I were very sexually active. So Wendy goes, but your favorite position is missionary. Honey, mine too. When I'm feeling a little lazy and what else is going on? Wendy. She said, I just don't understand how it beats your puss up if you're laying missionary. Oh, well, girl, maybe you ain't had the right one, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. So then Andy said, well, we don't know what G is working with. Child, we don't know and we don't want to know because honey, he was already trying to show us when they went on that little trip. So please let G keep his peace in his pants. Got it. Child, can we please move past the clitoronomy of it all or whatever it's called, child? As Nene would say, they done wore that out. Your clit has left your body. Shout out to Nene Leaks. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the first thing that came to my mind when they keep mentioning this girl's clitoris. Honey, it just keeps reminding me of Nene sitting at that table. So Andy said, a viewer wanted to know if you were a stripper or an escort or exactly what you're doing because who's paying $10,000 to talk to you in a ball gown? So Mia said, you know, it's very common in high-end establishments. Andy is like, and where is this? So Giselle said, it's a strip club in South Carolina. And so Andy said, what's the name of it? She said, the men's club. Well, child, y'all know what I did? I got on the Googler. I said, let me look up men's club. And it is one in Houston. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, <laughs> I'm about to create an expose. I'm going to do some investigative work to see if the ball gowns are present because, you know, me, you got a little lying problem. And apparently G helped build the upstairs VIP. And I was like, not G a founding father and whatnot. She said, you know, I really fell in love with G after I realized that he had a heart for people and that he wasn't just walking around the strip club with his shoes off. So according to Mia, so according to Mia, there's a shoe shiner a masseuse, a cigar bar, a chiropractor, a makeup artist. Girl, what in the Mall of America kind of strip club is this? I was like, what? Girl, not everything in one. Moving forward, Andy started telling Mia about the overwhelming support for her mom. And Mia said, well, you know, she said she was going to pray for Candace. Candace was like, I don't need her prayers. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, all you helpers could use some prayer. Every last one of you. Do you hear me? So then a viewer talked about how Mia makes it seem like she self-made when G handed down the franchise. She said G is an investor on another account, but he didn't invest in this one. He owned McDonald's restaurants and sold out and I had a massage envy and he invested before they got married. Let me just say this. I'm all for your man investing in your success because what's wrong with that? Like, okay, what is wrong with it? Would it be better if he were buying her shoes and handbags? Like, I'll take a massage envy any day. Honey, honey, sign me up. So then they call her out about her flip-flopping. Shout out to Cynthia Bailey. Yes, child, because honey, she like a fish out of water, just flopping all around. She said, you know, I speak what I feel in the moment. Not Mia, okay? You wanted to be accepted by Giselle at first. Let's just keep it real. Giselle said, yeah, now nah, that's a lie. Giselle said, you know, I feel like Karen was in her ear. Now, I know it's hard for you to fathom, Gizzard, anyone not liking you, but it was her decision. Because I feel like Mia is the type of person to not want to rest on what someone else says. She want to create some chaos on her own. So I do feel like she came to that decision by herself. So Andy asked Giselle if she feels like Karen was coaching her. And she said, absolutely. Karen said, look, Mia is separate from Karen. Okay. She did things on her own the way that she wanted to do them. Moving forward. We moved on to Giselle and her reel from this season and they show when the producer asks about Giselle and this mystery commentator. So she's like, yeah, that one, he's gone. So Andy said, well, Wendy has to know him, right? Wendy said, I do. Well, I know someone that claimed that they dated her, but I don't know if it's him that she's talking about. And Giselle said, she doesn't know him. Andy said, is it Van Jones? She said, yeah. Van Jones, we need to hear from you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> We need to hear from you. Child Van Jones be tied to the girls. Do y'all hear me? They have linked him to Kim K and everybody else. I'm like, okay. Van probably at home like, now how did I get into this? Now, now why are y'all talking about me? Moving forward. Wendy said, no, she's not his type. He likes women of integrity. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wendy ready for war already. Girl, let her get settled in her seat first. The seats ain't even warm yet. They ain't even touched up the makeup or nothing, baby. Wendy came out the gate swinging. Do y'all hear me? I was like, ooh, cha. Moving forward. So Andy said, let's talk about the West Wing, Giselle. He said, you know, is it all cohesive? Because it looked like a few different houses. <laughs> <laughs> Not the houses pieced together. Oh, cha, this is too much. She said, yes, it is. Not when they saw it, but it's getting better now. It's now it's cohesive. Baby, not that it's a sketch house, honey. It is coming along, according to Giselle. So Robin comes in and she's like, you know, the entryway is bringing it together. Let me just say this. Robin is a rider, okay? She's a true ride or die friend. But my question is this, which entryway is it? Okay, because Giselle got 15 different ways to get into that house. So I'm just trying to figure out, is it the real entryway? Is it the entryway that she made? You know, I, I just want to know which entryway it is, child. That's all I need to know. So Andy asked Karen if the house still looks like Ronald McDonald lives there. Baby. <laughs> now Ronald McDonald. Look, I might poke fun at Giselle, but I would get on Andy, honey. I would get him all the way together talking about my house. It would be a whole problem. I don't care what you think about it. The price tag says that I spent a coin, okay? It could be a condemned shack. I still spent $1.1 million on it. Child, that Andy was getting all over this house, honey. He hated to. Karen said, I don't know because I haven't seen it since the drive-by. And she said, drive-by? She said, I mean, drive-in? No, you mean the drive-through testing site because that's what you called it. <laughs> That's exactly what you called it. Moving forward. So then they start in with her relationship with Jamal. Oh, child, I'm so tired. When are we going to let Jamal rest? Huh? I know Giselle get tired of being in that hot seat behind Jamal, honey. This was an experiment gone wrong. So then Andy asked when her and Jamal broke up. And Giselle said, I don't know. I mean, earlier this year. Girl, say what it is. It's giving very much September, spring, summer. It's giving very much Sheba Sheree. Do you know or you don't know? So Andy tried to walk her through the timeline and she said, oh, okay, well then it's like late January, early December. So Wendy chimes in. She's like, I call BS because Jamal's big mouth said he was single in December. Andy said, oh yeah, he did say that. Giselle said he was meaning he's not married. Now I have to say this 
kind of in defense of Giselle, but not really. Well, the people in the church, they do say you are single until you get married, no matter if you are boyfriend and girlfriend or not. But I don't think that was the case here. I think he was actually saying he was single, free from Giselle. But they do say that in the church. And they say, look, I'm single, even if they sitting right there next to their man because they're not married. So Andy brings up Bindergate and Giselle said, that wasn't new information for me. Karen said, so you basically gave your consent to be the other woman this time around. Giselle said, no, we were both seeing, uh, we, we were trying to figure it out. Uh, I just keep them satisfied through the weekend. You like nine to five on the weekend. Shout out to SZA. <laughs> So y'all had an arrangement to see other people, but that's not how it was presented to us. Okay. So don't even try Giselle. I heard you cut yourself off. She was like, we were both. Mm -hmm. Y'all had an arrangement. The child is fine. So then they ask her why she's all up in everyone else's business, but doesn't want nobody snooping around her backyard. So she claims, you know, I, really, I shared everything, ma'am. No, you did not. Robin didn't even know anything about what was happening between you and Jamal. And she called you out on it during that season. You don't remember? Candace said, but it's not on the same level as what we share. So then Wendy diagnoses Giselle. And Giselle said, girl, you don't know me. And Wendy said, you don't know me either. Oh, child, they getting started. Moving forward. Andy said, what I want to know is when you found out about it, did you cry? Now, Andy, why is that relevant? Do you want her to fall apart? Like, this is the thing. Let me just say this. Those two concocted that scheme for a storyline, but it didn't work out because they didn't work out the logistics. The only reason she cared at all about the binder is because her girls got upset. And look, y'all cannot pay me to believe anything different. They were not back together for real. I said what I said and I ain't changing it. I do not believe that Jamal and Giselle were actually a real couple at the time of this whole thing that Todd set up to come at us with the bush because I'm not believing it. So Robin pipes up and she's like, just because she isn't reacting how you guys want her to doesn't mean that things don't matter to her because Andy was like, wouldn't it hurt you? Basically, Giselle was just like, I'm used to it. And that would be sad if they were really reconciled, but it was a shim sham moving forward. So then Andy talks about her daughters and they, them saying that she was an emotional vampire. And Giselle said, I had to be that way or else I wouldn't have made it. Now this, this right here, I know this came from the heart. Because I've been in that space. You build a wall up after being torn down so you can shield yourself from being hurt in that capacity again. I understand it. I understand it. That was a real statement. I know some people out there don't like Giselle, but that really was a real statement, especially after how Jamal embarrassed her out in society. I'm pretty sure she never wanted to experience that hurt again. So she just decided, look, y'all ain't gonna never get that out of me. From here on out, this is how I'm going to be, but it didn't translate in the right way to her daughters because she never had a conversation with them about everything that she endured, which she should have. Moving forward. Jamal is sick. And to walk around as a man of the cloth, honey, it's a fool. So they asked why Karen shames Giselle for not having a man. And she said, no, I shame Giselle for her choices. So she tried to skate past it. But then Giselle said, no, you said as you were preparing for your 25 years, Karen said, it was the magic of editing. <laughs> okay, lady. Okay. Then she started talking about it was therapeutic to put Giselle down. Honey, I don't know what the grand dame was talking about. I'm like, uh, Karen, honey, mm -mm, that ain't making no sense. Giselle, but don't you forget now that you said Karen falls off in other men's DMs while she was renewing her vows. So, I mean, if we're going to call out Karen, we got to call you out too. Moving forward. So Andy brings up that Jamal owes $800,000 in taxes child better get to pass in that collection plate she said well he's not my husband so that has nothing to do with me mine are paid karen said well you know since i have the experience let me lean in child not a play on words <laughs> oh that dang old karen karen said well since you were married to him at the time you know in 2008 they could come for you she said that has nothing to do with me andy said well it indirectly you know affects your daughter giselle said they're fine and so am i well giselle i just want to say this if you were in fact married to him at the time that he owed these taxes, it would have something to do with you. Okay, now you cannot act like you don't want them to be talking about taxes when you had a whole free Ray Ray t-shirt on. Hashtag free Ray and Karen. Like you can't get an attitude about that. 
But she said her girls and her are fine, so child, we gonna leave it alone. We take a commercial break, we come back. A scholar joins us. Hey girl, nice side ponytail. So they asked who she would love to style because everybody was saying she had such great style. She said, I would like to style Giselle and bring her current. Andy said, comment Giselle. She said, no. <laughs> now listen, this is what I want y'all to hear. Okay, now the people that have been here with me since the first review of Potomac. Now y'all tell me, okay, y'all tell me. Andy ain't peeping in at people's reviews because do y'all remember when I said Giselle takes a licking and keeps on ticking like a Duracell battery? Y'all remember when I said that? If you don't remember me saying that, go back to like a uh, review number three of this season. I think it was number three or number four. So Andy looks at Giselle after she says she has no comments and he goes, wow, you really take a licking and keep on ticking. Andy, let me find out. Let me find out you taking my stuff over there to Potomac's reunions. Shout out to the opinionators. So we journey on over to Candace and her bob. What's wrong with the bob? Something hers is completely folded under. <laughs> Shout out to Nene Leaks. Oh my goodness. Oh, baby, that Bob is bobbing. Do y'all hear me? So they show her real and her mom is stirring the pot per usual. And she tells them that she signed to E1. Congratulations. And Andy asks, who has heard the album? So, you know, majority, majority of them have. And Ashley said, you know, I haven't, but I plan on it. Andy said, well, do you think it's better than Coffee and Love? Honey, Andy is. Ain't nobody listening to Ashley and that little ditty she put together for Michael's creepy behind. All the things I want to tell ya. We've been through it all. And we rise not fall. Cause we're sipping the coffee, sipping the tea. Or whatever she was saying. <laughs> Child, no thank you to the auto-tune of it all, honey. One thing I can, can't take from Candace, honey. She gonna sing if she don't do nothing else. Moving forward. So they speak about Chris being the husbander. And Andy asks if he's getting paid. Why? 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 Does what he eat make you poop? I don't understand it. She said, I pay him in love. Mia said, getting paid for sex is prostitution. Girl, they're married. Mia, pipe down. Candace said, well, you would know. Mia said, yeah, I only speak on things I'm familiar with. So girl, were you more than an entertainer? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Cause you said you weren't a stripper. Then you turned into an entertainer. Then you turned into a person who models ball gowns and sits down and talks for a living. I don't know what is happening. Okay. So then they talk about her mom implying that she still pays for things. So Giselle said, you do realize that it was your mama going around to us talking about you and your husband, but you mad at us. So Mia asked the question first. Let's just make that clear, Giselle. But mama kept the party going. I do have to say that. She should have just cut her off. She should have been like, I don't know anything about if she's getting, he's getting paid or not. And that ain't none of my business. Candy said, you know, I pulled her to the side. Andy said, well, what did she say in her defense? She said they were basically asking her questions. So then they asked how Chris felt about hearing her mom say all that. So Candace needs a Kleenex. Andy folds one ever so, passes it on down, and the waterworks begin. Mia said, well, you would think a real friend would tell her it was her mom being messy. Wendy looked at her. She said, are you talking? Shut up. Oh, dang, Wendy. Baby, that front seat got you acting up. I thought her and Mia were cool. What happened to GVO? Child turned out to be STFU. Child, this is a fool. So Candy said, Chris is really hurt and I just don't know how to get my family back together. I don't know how to fix it. Chris didn't deserve all that. I have to say, Chris is unproblematic. Okay, just leave Chris alone, child. Miss Dorothy got to get over it. That's who she chose. So if that's who she chose to be with, child, she married who she married and she ain't changing it, child. What y'all need to be worried about and Chris needs to be worried about is fussing and fighting with you for emasculating him every chance you get. That's what really needs to be talked about. So they talk about the low budget comment and Candace said, I wasn't supposed to pander to the extras. I was there to get the shot. The goal is to get the shot. Mia said, you spent $10,000. The video was low budget. So basically she said what she said and she ain't changing it. So then they asked Candace if she knew about Mia's backstory. She said, no, I didn't know about her backstory with her mom at all. And if I knew, I would have said something else. So then she says, you know, in the black community, it's called joning. And, you know, I went light and you were ungrateful. And girl say what now? Oh, my God, girl, you could have just cut it off. And I would have said something different. Like, ugh, Candace, Candace. So Andy said, so she's supposed to be grateful that you said your mama's low budget. 
So then Giselle pipes up and she says, I didn't feel like all that you said out of your mouth was justifiable. I didn't feel like that situation warranted that. So Candy said, well, welcome to the stage. We all do that. That's what we do. And so Andy said, so how's that working out for you? She said, what? He said, how are people responding to the way that you respond to things? How's that working for you? You were almost physically assaulted last year. Almost. Andy, don't backpedal now. You treated Monique like a second class citizen last reunion. Now it's Oh, your mouth. It makes people want to assault you. Okay, Andy, you just doing damage control on the slick, honey, and you ain't fooling me. He said, you're the common denominator. Now, this is true, honey. She always into it with somebody, and we now we got to call a spade a spade. Candace is always into it with somebody. Like, my God. So, Candace said, everyone has done it, but because I'm better at it, it's a problem. Here go, Karen. Oh, I don't think nobody is better at it than me and Giselle. <laughs> Karen, sit back. Girl, sit back. Karen said, we walked so you could run, honey. So Andy brings up the butter knife. Here go Candace with the convenient amnesia. What butter knife? Girl, you remember when you were waving that butter knife around at Ashley? Now let's not forget. So Candace took no accountability for that. She said, Ashley brought her big face back into my home, not once, but twice. Um... Candace, actually Giselle's messy behind went out and got her and invited her back in to escalate the situation some more, not once, but twice. Giselle did that. I will never forget it because this is before the days of reviews and anything else. And that's just when I used to talk to the TV. And I was like, Giselle, how are you going to invite this woman back into Candace's house? Like, what is wrong with you? But you know, Giselle loves some mess, child moving forward so then you know because candace mentioned ashley's big face and her forehead ashley was like we both have five heads honey and do but it's fine it's fine so andy asked why he was like why do i wake up to tweets saying fire her child you go to sleep with him too so candace continues to deflect and giselle said you threw the lettuce first she said so after watching that if by chance mia clocked you I would have been like, oh, well, because of the severity of what you were saying. Okay, pause. So let me get this straight. It would have been okay for Mia to hit her. But last year, you hired security to follow you around because of Monique. Okay, I'm not going to give this hypocrite any more life, child. Let's just move on. Candace said, I never started. I'm always responding to what someone is doing to me. So Giselle is telling her, you know, she needs to learn to pull it back. So Candace brings up how Mia put her mother's sobriety on her. Now that was a reach. And I remember saying that in my review. Mia, your mom has choices, sweetheart. A cat fight should not trigger her to relapse. And that weight should not be put on anyone. So I do agree with Candace in saying that, you know, you shouldn't put that off on me. But then Candace went a little bit too far saying Mia was parading her mom around for a storyline. And child, it always goes left. But before I end this review, let me just say this. I no longer enjoy watching these reunions because it's the same old BS regurgitated and reiterated to keep the fans pit against each other. Everybody up in an uproar, acting a fool. And why should Candace say this? And why should Mia do that? And I'm team Wendy and I hate Giselle. Like it's too much. Okay. And then I understand that the reunions are to bring about things that the ladies may have not seen that the other ladies said in confessionals or to just keep get the record straight when it comes to certain things. But sometimes it just feels like some old catty bush. Okay. And I also want to address Andy in closing. Okay. Cause this is what I want y'all to know. I have faithfully watched every single franchise and the reunions all the way down to Miami and Dallas who are no longer with us and I actually like Dallas it was just something for me to watch when it wasn't nothing else on but honey that's just a side note and I just want to say Candace's mouth is dumpster juice yes it is okay she can say some old child let me tell you something you might find the wrong person on the right day and that mouth of yours could cause something okay and we can't act like it's not outside of the 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 walls and the parameters of the real housewives of Potomac your mouth being slick like that could cause things to happen. And I'm not going to sit here and act like it can't. But so does Erica James over on Beverly Hills. Okay. I watched as she calls Sutton a see you next Tuesday crickets. Nobody said a word to her. Andy went in on this reunion. Okay. On both Giselle and Candace. 
but didn't say one word to Erica Jane. Now, if y'all don't watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, please just take a moment to just watch the four-part reunion so that you can understand what I'm talking about, okay? He smiled, he looked at Erica, and he said, you're such an interesting person. I've never met anyone like you. When she threatened to do physical harm to a chagrin, he was just like, <laughs> well, you didn't mean it like that? All I'm saying is this, before y'all get down in the comments and y'all start to argue, take a look at who the real villain is, okay? Because our people get treated much different than their franchise counterparts. And I'm team me before anybody. I really could care less what's happening between we already went through this when the season was going on. But I just thought that it was strange to see how he was asking how certain things were working for them and why don't you cry and all of this. But I just saw you sit through a four part reunion with Erica Jane, whose husband is accused of, as well as her in connection to, of stealing from widows, orphans, and burn victims. And you said she's one of the most interesting people that you've ever met. And then you said, I'm just so happy that you acknowledged the victims on today. And she didn't acknowledge a dang on thing, okay? I don't have time to state my case for the people that couldn't pick me out of a lineup, but I just wanted to make sure that I let it be known that Andy is in fact the villain. Please don't hesitate to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Let me know exactly what you thought about the first part of the reunion. What did you think about the looks? What did you think about, you know, Wendy piping up every few minutes, honey, because she's in that first seat? I didn't really know about the seating arrangements. I liked Wendy this season, but I do feel like Karen should have had the front seat and, you know, Wendy should have maybe had the second. But then I do remember that Candy over on Atlanta said that she realizes when you get the first seat, that means you had the most drama. So then it makes sense. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly how you felt. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.